Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Maxine Waters just caved. Look what she said about her working with North Korea. Maxine Waters has the brains of a bag of rocks. She is now pushing our negotiations with North Korea to as she said, give them what they want. Nobody has told her that Kim Jong-un wants the absolute destruction of the United States, says MRC TV. Based on what she said to TMZ, Waters is totally happy with North Korea telling the U.S. what to do. The United States State Department must be stacked up to deal in diplomacy, Waters said. I want us to be very careful, very alert to what is happening and to avoid war, Maxine repeated. Maxine Waters does not appear to be working for the American people. She seems very averse to protecting the American people. Do you think Maxine Waters is a menace to society? Here is what she said about Trump. This is something that we should be very concerned about, but this is not the time to go bluffing and threatening. This is a time for a diplomacy, Waters said. Share this if you are tired of politicians bending over North Korea. We have had years and years of this and nothing has gotten done. Get this out there. Expose Maxine Waters for the yellow-bellied politician that she is. Come on get this failure of a politician voted out of office. Meltdown Cuomo just asked Sanders if he was running in 2020 and then all hell broke loose on camera. Senator Bernie Sanders has always had a history of impassioned speeches, but the tirade he let fly on CNN's Chris Cuomo was shocking to say the least. Cuomo simply suggested that people want Sanders to run for president in 2020. Are you the messenger for this message? Cuomo asked Sanders about his book on Thursday night. But Sanders wasn't having any of it, immediately firing back with some heated words. The media never ever gives up, and instead of focusing on real issues they keep talking about never-ending campaigns. Sanders continued to slam Cuomo for constantly asking him who will run in 2020, but Cuomo surprisingly snapped back, yeah, because I've never liked the answer that it matters who runs. The problem with this logic is that no one will be running for a long time, and endless inquiries as to who the next president will be only distracts from the achievements of our current commander-in-chief. It's time to focus on the issues that are plaguing this country and we already have an administration that is more than equipped to handle the job. As it turns out, Sanders agrees. Chris, of course it matters who runs but we don't need to have never-ending elections. We just had an election six months ago, it never ends, Sanders yelled. People are sick and tired of it. People want me to go back to Washington to deal with climate change, to deal with health care, to deal with education, to deal with the issues that impact their lives. Of course, the biggest part of this problem is the incessant media working relentlessly to hold up the White House. If Bernie Sanders is starting to complain about the media, maybe the rest of the country will finally cash wind of what's really going on behind closed doors. CNN especially has proven themselves to be untrustworthy, and now they're already focusing coverage on something nearly four years away. If you're sick and tired of the leftist media's never-ending games, share this video before it goes viral. Sources, DailyCaller.com Justice Wynn's new FBI director just made every Antifa a criminal with just two words. To anyone who has been to a Trump rally or even watched an internet video, there can be zero doubt that Antifa are a bunch of dangerous and violent psychopaths using force to destroy our country. That much is a fact. Now, those anarchists who prey on ignorant liberal teens have been smashed one final time that will shut them down for sure. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security have declared Antifa domestic terror organization. This is actually not a recent discovery, either. It turns out the FBI and DHS determined back in 2016 that Antifa was a terror organization and began warning states back then of the danger they posed. Still, many Dems saw these alt-left extremists as allies in the fight against the Republicans and decided to ignore the warning. Thanks to the label, however, the new FBI director Christopher Wray is working overtime to put all the known Antifa on the terror watch list to prevent them from creating WMDs and traveling overseas to get anarchy training in Greece and Italy. So now the ball is in the Democrat court. They were so ready to say Trump was wrong to call Antifa violent and dangerous. It turns out the FBI agreed with Trump even back then. Help share this major report everywhere and put Antifa away once and for all.
Trump just turned and said one thing to Harvey relief effort organizers that will fill every American with pride. Hurricane Harvey has been a horrible reminder of the power of nature to cause devastation, but if there is a silver lining it has also served been a reminder of the power of Americans to work together to help each other. President Trump said exactly this when he invited representatives from the Red Cross, Salvation Army, and Southern Baptist Disaster Relief Organizations to thank them for their tireless efforts to help those in need. President Trump applauded the efforts and quick response of these three organizations to install relief efforts to those in Houston and the surrounding area as well as the work of Vice President Mike Pence to visit the people of Houston. Here's what Trump had to say. These people have been absolutely incredible in what they've done. I would like to thank them and their staff and volunteers for the incredible work they're doing and in helping people affected by Hurricane Harvey. President Trump then asked First Lady Melania to speak and she again thanked the efforts of volunteers and Americans helping each other through this horrible natural disaster. Watch President Trump's full statement here. Then the representatives from the relief groups followed up thanking the other groups for their collaboration and combined efforts to help as many people in need. The Salvation Army has already served hundreds of thousands of meals and plans to serve millions to those in need. God bless America and our President. This is the power of America when we put aside our differences to help each other. Benghazi nightmare This judge just gave Hillary Clinton some very bad news. Judge James E. Bosberg is on the attack. He wants the details of Hillary's email investigation to finally get seen by the public. Earlier this week, we reported that FBI was withholding documents on the Clinton investigation based on lack of public interest. According to The Washington Times, a federal judge has ordered the FBI to disclose more details on the investigation into Hillary Clinton's secret email account. After reviewing the document in camera, the court concludes that it largely rehashes information already made public, thus obviating any need for secrecy, the judge said. Judicial Watch has been suing the government for more info on Clinton's emails. Here is what Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch says about it. After reviewing the document in camera, the court concludes that it largely rehashes information already made public, thus obviating any need for secrecy, the judge said. Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch released a statement about this ruling. We're happy with the ruling but it is unbelievable we're being opposed by Trump appointees in the state and justice departments on the Clinton email issue. President Trump ought to be outraged his appointees are protecting Hillary Clinton. The State Department should initiate action with the Justice Department, and both agencies should finally take the necessary steps to recover all the government emails Hillary Clinton unlawfully removed. It's time that the emails finally come out. The public deserves to know the truth. Get this out there, patriots. Don't back down in the face of this evil. Trump just gave a huge gift to our military men and women while pissing off the feds. Under President Trump's budget proposal, our military men and women, who give so much of themselves to preserve our freedom, are getting a raise. And that raise will not be affected by the cut the president will give to federal employees. Civilian federal employees were expecting to get a raise, too, of 1.9 percent. This would have been an automatic raise, and include and an additional cost of living raise. But Trump has determined that is not appropriate. They will still get a raise, just not as much as anticipated. Trump explained in a letter to Paul Ryan and Mike Pence, that he has authority to change federal salaries in times of national emergency or serious economic conditions affecting the general welfare. He also said that the automatic raise that would have happened would not leave enough money in the federal budget to maintain support for key federal priorities such as those that advance the safety and security of the American people. While I hate to see anyone not be paid appropriately for their work, I trust that the president has our best interests at heart and our safety and security is clearly his priority. I'm very happy about how he also prioritizes our service men and women and their families. They sacrifice so much for our freedom, they deserve our respect and pay. Trump wrote I strongly support our men and women in uniform, who are the greatest fighting force in the world and the guardians of American freedom. If you agree, please say thank you to them by sharing this everywhere. H. T. The Daily Mail Trump is about to do the incredible to get key Democrats to betray their party. Trump is a brilliant strategist who knows how to make things happen and get things done. Yes, he's not yet been able to achieve his goal regarding Obamacare but, hey, he's only been in office for eight months. And that ball is nowhere near out of play yet. 
his new objective is to pass his tax reform plan. It ain't gonna be easy, since it needs 60 votes in the Senate and Republicans only hold 52 seats. A majority, but still not enough. But Trump has a plan and it's smart. His plan is to convince Democratic senators, in states he won, to swing his way. And it could work. He knows that the people of the states he won, obviously, like him. They voted for him, didn't they? For example, he's headed to North Dakota next week, to hold a tax reform event in the state of Democratic Senator Heidi Heitkamp. Heitkamp happens to be up for re-election next year. See where this is going? Our smart POTUS is also setting his sights on swinging Joe Donnelly of Indiana and Joe Manchin of West Virginia, also Democrats. These congressmen and women have their jobs to worry about, see? And Trump intends to try to use that to his advantage. Not a thing wrong with that. Those representatives should represent by doing what their constituents want them to do, right? Of course, he's going to have to find a way to swing for others, but I believe there's a way, because I know Trump has the will. If you want to see Trump get tax reform done, please share with everyone, since he needs help. H. T. The Daily Mail